Welcome everybody to the Daily Hi-Fi Podcast. It's Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific time, Pacific Standard Time. So you know what that means. It's A V it fun for all. That's oh, right. Yeah. And today we've got some special guests. We've got the Larry and we've got Nick from SVS. Uh also along with me is uh Michael and Joe and Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner. What is up, everyone? Ooh, What's going on? Full house here. tonight. Going? We oh, are excited. I kind of missed the the uh Nick. Uh, from last time, a Nick, the Nick, yeah. Oh <laughs> man, some of, year. some of these people have been in the chat for the past for hour. hour, yeah. Since, yeah. since, yeah, I, I, I jumped in at like two thirty, and there was five people already in yep. here. It was crazy. Dang. You guys, you guys are awesome. We love you for that. Yeah, definitely. That's Very it. first comment, Retro Force says, "Woohoo, my PB one thousand pros got shipped today." Got some, it's got some SVS fans in the house, so that's good to have you guys. I think he said yeah, dual, right? Yeah, he's got a couple yeah. of them coming. Mm -hmm. That's who said awesome. that? You're the man. Whoever, whoever is that? Re whoever retro you, force. I think he, see, it was so is. long ago that we can't even put the comment on screen because it doesn't go that far back. <laughs> oh, you're right. It see? sure does. I just it only goes back to two fifty seven. That's hilarious. So I, yeah. No, that's so a, sorry. We would we'd put it up there. So there. Good We're stuff, man. How you how you guys been doing, man? Yeah. I mean, it's been crazy. Like the the launch that we just did last week yeah. uh, with the 1000 Pro series. Obviously, well, maybe not. Obviously, we haven't done a launch in over a year. Yeah. And so, you know, conditions, as we all know, are a little bit different now in, sure. in the world and in society and in marketing. And uh, and so there was just a, a separate set of uh, of challenges, but also yeah. opportunities for us to launch this product. And you know, it was it was just super exciting. We usually right. do in person events. Larry and I are at dealers around the country, showing these things off, you know, doing the live stream there. We didn't have that opportunity. So we did our little audio file happy hour, launched them live on air. And then from there, it just sort of opened the floodgates. So uh, it was just a ton of, you know, excitement, lots of comments. And I would say as far as any product launch we've ever done, it was uh, the most successful for SVS. So, you know, nice. I think looking back on that, it was, uh, you know, again, super crazy with all the stuff that was going on, but very exciting. You and guys gave away the product? a ton of stuff too. We did, uh, yeah. That, oh, wow. that was part of the fun. I think we, we like to say half the people come for the giveaways, half the people come for the knowledge. Right. And I think with the the uh, the product the, uh, announcement, there, there was people there for the mystery too. So nice. all, I think all, the, all worked out really well. And the it. third you half come just to drink, right? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> who can blame them? You know, they're they're, they're going to be doing that anyway, so you might as well uh, have something to watch while you're doing it. Yeah, and we kept it pretty quiet, so you know we're, that's that's kind of the the mystery and the the lure behind what we're going to do. Nice. And I think that really brought a lot of people in. I, I know that some of you were talking to us before we got in here about all the comments. People were guessing what it was. Yeah. You, got, you guys are it. like the WandaVision of, uh, of the audio community. You know what I mean? You're going to start having to like make websites where we try to predict what's going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to analyze. You see, you see what's like, going what on. Are they, what, what are they doing next? next? What are they making next? Although, nice. I got to say, guys, I got to say, you, you did what I wanted to... Uh, what what I wanted to see you you made that uh, PB one thousand Pro have a twelve inch driver so I was pretty stoked about that. that was, and a second that was port, yeah, yeah. I mean that, yeah. that's one of the things we always try to do with uh, any product launch. It's you know especially if there's uh, a series being replaced, we don't want to just throw a new finish on it. You know yeah. rebadge it as something new. You know it got a full ecosystem overhaul from the driver to the amplifier, the cabinet geometry, everything about it is uh, is an upgrade from the previous 1000 series so um, that was really important to us you know we're going to trickle down this technology we want to really bring as much as we can in terms of performance and bang for the buck and uh you know i think with this series specifically we, we really nailed it yeah you guys you know the chat in your live stream was just going off it was just yeah yeah there's no way to keep up with all that yeah. and there were a ton of questions in there Great questions. that i know that you guys weren't able to you know answer and so I'm hoping that maybe this time we can maybe answer some of the questions that weren't answer, uh, answered last time, things like that. And so, you know, maybe that's one way we can go with it. Sound yeah, good? Yeah, we're here. Mailbag. Yeah. Bring them on. We're yeah, ready to so, talk about this new product. So. All right, let's yeah, do that, it. That's why I brought Larry here because he's so much smarter than I am. So, you know, hopefully <laughs> all, all the tough questions go to him. That's right. And uh, all the softballs <laughs> go to me. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's like that. uh, Aaron over there. That's what he's here for. You know, he's like, I don't know if you guys know who Dr. Drew is. 
You guys know who Dr. Drew? Oh, Love Line. Love Line. Yeah, Love Line. yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is like my Dr. Drew over here. I'm over here just oh, saying oh, silly stuff. That, and then he Drew just keeps me in chance than I do. Yeah. You're know. like Adam Carolla, is what you're saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Adam, you're Adam, Adam Carolla, this Carolla. silly dude. And oddly enough, when I delivered pizzas, I delivered pizza to Dr. Drew's house. Very nice, very nice gentleman. Nice. Kids were cool. running around like crazy, but he was cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Very, very cool. Um, I know I have some questions. If you have any questions, leave them in the in the chat we'll pop them up uh michael do you want to just say what's up to some of the people here in the chat and uh talk about our after show absolutely man king is in the house we got rick easy a lot of you guys were in here super super early so definitely appreciate that just building the community in the hi-fi uh juan is here who else we got i'm scroll way down si services gene glad you're here man just a lot of you guys are our regulars we definitely appreciate you guys and then right after the show, as always, we'll have our after party. Usually it's about 30 minutes. So if you're one of our patrons, you get access to that. You can head over to patreon.com slash daily hi-fi to get signed up for that. We just have a blast over there. And then usually our guests um, pop in just for a few minutes to answer any personal one-on-one -on -one questions that you might have. And you get to do that in video format, not just in chat. So it's a lot of fun. Hope you guys will join us after the show. There it is. Patreon.com forward slash daily hi fi. If you can pop that into the chat, somebody, that would be good. I, I got it. Cool. Oh. So, yeah. So, what do we have? We have the PB1000 <laughs> Pro. Right. Every, I always get it confused. You know, I kind of joke like when you guys had that mystery box, I was just like, you know, Cable Risers Pro Ultra. <laughs> there it is. You know, SP it's funny. The Pro. Pro? When people saw that crate, like the little teaser image that we uh, we shared, it was, you know, the guesses were going off the rails in terms oh, yeah. of, oh, what could fit in that box? Oh, it's, it's like a, you know, three, like 10 foot long sound bar. Or it's this right. and that. And we're just like having fun watching people guess. Um, but yeah, we actually uh, had some fun saying what our product launch was not going to be using some of those uh, those wrong guesses. But um, yeah, no, the, the uh, you know, SP model, sealed box, ported box, uh, PB1000 Pro. Um, those are the two new models that we just launched uh, last week. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's, they've been wildfire and we're happy to take any uh, any questions from the crew here or, um, you know, give a little frame up if that's what you guys prefer, whatever you want to do. So I think one of the questions that I had last time during your uh, live stream was the frequency response. So I see that you're hitting the magic number, even with the sealed one, 20 hertz yeah. and 17 hertz with that uh, with the ported, the ported one. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And this is yeah, we've got the whole line that does that now. So it's you know, hitting the magic number from beginning to end is yeah. uh, it's a pretty amazing product lineup. And you know, I've got an SB one thousand, the original here under my desk, and the SB one thousand pro is coming. And uh, I've knocked another couple albums off this week while I've been building PowerPoint with just the SB one thousand. I've got both a PB one thousand and an SB one thousand pro coming. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of thinking I'm gonna end up redecorating this room. There you oh, go. Wow. Look yeah, out. little known fact, the original SB-1000 was Larry's favorite subwoofer of all the SVS subwoofers. And why is that, Larry? Because it's like you. Why? Because it's uh, small and loud and unassuming. And, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, nice. You know, it's It stands out in a room whenever it needs to or can just sit back and be quiet and just uh, chill. take things in. So, so did, I see, did I see there that you've got a white one that's coming too? Yes, yeah, so we actually have that available now. The uh, nice. the PB one thousand Pro uh, comes in a, a premium black ash finish, and then mm -hmm. the SB one thousand Pro will come in a uh, piano gloss black, piano that gloss cool. black, and then that same black ash finish. So you got three different finishes for the uh, more compact model. Nice. That and I can say that, that white, so hot, man. that white yeah. looks awesome. Yeah, it does. Uh, you should send one the SB two thousand. The SB two thousand Pro, I think you sent me to test, is in the white, and that thing is gorgeous. Looks cool. The, yeah, you should send one to Joe. Ridiculous. To uh, match his uh, height channels. Yeah. <laughs> match his background. <laughs> Joe might be getting something in, in white gloss here. In the oh. future, but that's not for uh, for us to talk about right now. But, uh, you know, it's the, the white gloss and the finishes in general. I, I mean, I think that's one of the requests mm -hmm. we get frequently. And I'm actually curious what you guys think. Mm -hmm. You know, are you into like the cherry, the walnut, like all these exotic wood I finishes? Or is it more yeah. just about, you know, something that'll fit? It's black. It fits with all your other gear. Like yeah. how, how important is that? I know for me, I've always loved those darker reds, you know, the cherry, the mahogany, those deep, rich reds, um, something about that. But some people say that's kind of old school and, you know, everybody's got their own preferences. And of course, everybody's got their own 
kind of aesthetics in their room too. And so, like you said, the black kind of fits in with everything. The white is super classy, um, very modern, you know, looking, but not everybody's got that room. So um, maybe let us know in the comments, man. What do you guys like? What Yours kind are of, hidden behind that screen anyway, like? Michael. <laughs> You're I'm talking, about my, I'm talking screen. about my living room. Like, oh, you know, okay, okay. Yeah, even speakers, you know. I mean, I, I've just always loved that. In, in speakers, I guess, more than subwoofers. You, you know because. what would be hot for the people who can't hide the, their speakers and stuff like that is like that uh, Vanta Black, the one that just mm. absorbs all the light. You know, so if you're using a projector, something where it's like a matte black finish. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah. think people would like something like that. I don't know. I mean, but I'd know. love that. I I always, I'd love to see any component in that Vanta Black, which is just like, it looks like a like it's a black hole, like literally <laughs> taking the light yeah. out of the room. Yeah. Hey, I before mean, we get too far, I want to give a big thanks to Tomas. Oh, yeah. He has a question here. Thanks so much for the super chat. He says, how does the new PB1000 Pro compare in explosiveness, output, and dimensions to the top original PB2000? Holy what do you got for us? Man, Ooh. so that's, you know, I, let me just add to that. You guys are always, like, stepping it up in each one of the lines, and it kind of scares me for you guys because I'm like, are you cannibalizing mm. the other line by doing this? Because you're adding a lot of stuff. You're not, like, that's holding the, back. That's the same question I had about the SB1000. Larry, I'm going to let you address uh, Tomas's question, and then I'll, I'll take uh, you know, the little dig there that, uh, that Joe threw out. Well, I, I think I know where you're going to go with that, so I'll try not to step on uh, that answer as well. But it, it is, it's kind of a goal of ours to you know, make a product almost step on the toes of the model above it. And that way, you know, if somebody wants to, of a product it's easier to make the decision to maybe do two of a 1000 series versus two of a 2000 series or pros in this case but when you compare specs and capabilities of the new pb 1000 pro to the existing pb 2000 they're very similar um, in regards to specifications but obviously the pb 2000 pro does produce a little more uh, output due to its physical size but having the additional port now on the PB1000 Pro, along with the mm -hmm. app and tuning capabilities, it is a more flexible product now in that all of our ported subs now from 1000 Pro, 2000 Pro, 3000, 4000, 16 Ultra, all the ported models uh, have the flexibility of being uh, ported, extended in the port tuning where you can plug one or multiple ports um, or plug all three or both ports on the 2000 Pro and 1000 Pro models to have them act as three different subs in one box. And I think that's where they really stand apart. And if you're really going to compare the 2000 or at PB 2000 to the uh, PB 1000 pro uh, right now, the PB 1000 pro just has a little more functionality. And I would say the, uh, I think Tomas asked, asked specifically about the previous PB 1000 and you know, you're going to get significantly greater output, especially at that 20 hertz and below those frequencies where, you know, you're really kind of feeling that guttural bass. Um, so you're going to feel it the most there. But I, I think one of the things that often goes underestimated is the uh, the power of the DSP. And with the 50 megahertz analog devices DSP that we have within our amplifier platform, you're just getting, you know, lower distortion. You're getting much cleaner, more accurate bass. Um, you know, the transient speeds better like there's there's a lot that you get from having that much processing power within the amplifier that we simply didn't have with the previous 1000 series so as much as you know the second port lets you get a little bit more um, output in the you know the larger driver size helps you get you know greater maximum dynamic output the dsp it just gets you that sort of cleaner more accurate just a little bit more you know transient base that uh that's you know hard to quantify in terms of numbers you know, with SPLs and stuff like that, but it's it's no less important than some of the other things that I mentioned. And just to, if I can keep rambling here, to address the whole point about like cannibalizing, we kind of kind of don't mind that. You know, when we launched our 3000 series, the same thing. Everyone's like, oh, you're not going to sell any more 4000s. You know, we said, launched a 2000 Pro, you're not going to sell any more 3000s. Yet, you know, we persevere here. And I think no. our whole mentality was to take what we did with the 16 Ultras, our flagship reference models, and bring as much of that to each subsequent line as possible. And now here we are at a, a subwoofer that's roughly one quarter of the price. And we're bringing that amplifier platform, which was probably the hardest part, of, part about developing the 1000 Pro, was making that sub uh, that amplifier platform work within this these cabinets and with this design. Um, but, you know, I, I think as we'll see over the next couple of months, uh, it, it really worked out well for us. And then, uh, you know, our community appreciates that. You know, we're bringing that reference technology as, as far down as we can with, with all of our series. I think that's awesome because if you, you know, you guys are kicking your own butt 
And if you're not doing that, then maybe it's your competitor that's going to yeah. do it. So mm -hmm. might as well do it yourself. So right. uh, I, I guess uh, um, this soundbite here just describes SBS. Danger is my middle name. Because they, they don't care. They don't <laughs> care. They're, 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 they're going to make it happen, right? All right. And I think yeah. you'll find an you'll find a target audience with all of those. You know, you're going to have people that love the PB1000, and they're going to be the SB2000, and you're going to be the PB16s. And so, by having that huge selection, it just literally offers something for everybody. Your budget doesn't matter at that point because you've got something to fit those budgets. So that's pretty cool. And, the, and there's always an improvement. Each series that you step up, you are getting more output. You are getting deeper low frequency extension. So you know, it's not like it's you know, you're, you're not getting anything for that, that upgrade. Um, so it is important to note that, but now the experience, the user experience is very consistent throughout all of them with the app, with the DSP and all those things that we were mentioning. All right. Can I put you on the spot then real quick and just say, uh, you got, don't get too worried. Um, let's say in a quick, like as quickly as possible elevator pitch, what happens when you go from the 1000 pro to 2000, 3000, you know, what happens on each stage? What are the differences? Like, Larry, I'm going to let expect? you take this one and I'll, I'll uh, put the cherry on top if you want. Gotcha. Well, obviously, as you work your way up, we're adding more power. So you go from 325 watts, you know, 500, 700, 800, 000, 12, 1500. As you work your way up, you add more power. Uh, you add more cabinet volume. You add more frequency capabilities. So as you work your way up the line, you'll see there's a two to three hertz difference in each model, whether it's sealed or ported it's actively going up. So they can take on larger spaces, they can hit lower, can be more impactful in smaller rooms, just kind of as you work your way up, you are actively getting an additional step up. So not everybody can afford a $700 SB2000 Pro, but if we're looking at the SB1000 Pro at $500, that is something that more people can get into and finally get a reference quality product sure. in that price point as well. Uh, when you go to the ported models, it's probably even a bigger difference when you move from, say, a 1000 Pro to a 2000 Pro and just sheer output volume. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do gain all the way around. You're stepping up and there's not huge steps like there are in some other product lines that are out there. It's it's incremental steps, but you do gain um, incremental price steps, but you're gaining absolute steps in performance as well. Yeah, and, and you know, from a technology standpoint, you know, there's there's things that we have to do with each individual model within the motor, the suspension, the voice coil. You know, I think one of our big storylines with the 16 Ultra is like first ever eight inch voice coil, and that's the only way we could maintain that level of precise driver control with the 16 inch driver. You know, with our 3000 series, we had this edge wind split wound voice coil which basically allows you to have greater magnetic force at the poles of the former, which is like what the copper's wrapped around. And that just allows you to hit max excursion and really crank those SPLs out when you know you, you have that sort of peak uh, output moment where you really want to hear it the most. And from a small cabinet, that's hard to do. And uh, you know now with uh, the, the 1000 Pro, we've, we've done things with the, uh, the motor and the voice coil as well to make it operate within that sort of condensed compact uh, you know, ecosystem within the uh, cabinet. So, you know, those are the things that sort of manifest themselves as uh, output and, and clean, like uh, clarity and whatnot, you know, but to Larry's point, it's really each line you step up, you get deeper low frequency extension, greater output, and that, you know, that's a guarantee. And then, you know, some of the things that are happening on the inside, um, they're all meant to just improve the sound quality and make sure you're getting the best experience from that specific cabinet design. So the 13 inch driver starts with the 3000, is that right? Correct. Uh, yes. 13 and yeah. a half for the 4,000 and then 16 for the 16. Yeah. Okay. So when you go from 3,000 to 4,000, not only a slightly larger driver, more power, but you're also adding XLR inputs and outputs on the 4,000 and 16 Ultra, which you do not have on the models below. Mm -hmm. And you also have that front panel LED display with infrared. And having the infrared is really cool because you can incorporate our subwoofer control into a smart remote that's, say, in your living room. Uh, so I think I've probably talked about with this, you guys in the past is saving presets in your subwoofer mm -hmm. for your listening habits. And if you're in your living room, you hit watch movie and your Blu-ray comes on and I'm going to hit this question too now Juan. Um, if you've got presets saved and you hit say watch movie, your Blu-ray comes on, your TV comes on and your subwoofer goes to movie mode. And then if you do watch TV, 
all that stuff switches and the IR would then go to the 4000 or 16 Ultra and switch them to whatever preset you've saved there. Now, I know there's a lot of people asking about having uh, multiple subs being controlled by our app and you can totally have numerous subwoofers able to be controlled in the app, but we don't have it to where you can do multiples at one time because you don't always want to make the exact same adjustment on the sub that's in this corner versus that corner. <clears throat> so all you do is you simply drop down in a menu and choose. So say you have a subwoofer on the left and a subwoofer on the right, you name them whatever you want. So left and right or whatever. And then you just access whichever one you're wanting to take control of. And part of the reason we don't do both at the same time is because they're not both set the exact same way. And there's also, a, part of you know, if you have more than one SVS subwoofer in different rooms, you may not want to be tweaking those, you know, at the same time. Um, less frequent, you know, point. a use case, but that's another concern that, you know, people have had. Those it would be, definitely have some range. I found I can out see like where they 40 feet easy. I can see where they'd want some of that. Cause even in, when I did the app review or the kind of tutorial that I did a long time ago, that was one of the comments that I made in it is that when you're making some of the same things, like say for instance, you do a preset and you want to do a preset for night mode or whatever, to be able to toggle both of those on at the same time. But I don't know how you would like functionally do that inside the app to make that, to be able to select certain things that, you know, could be together or volume, you know, and things like that. That way you're moving, moving the volume of both subwoofers up and down at the same time versus doing the volume of this one and then switching over and doing the volume of that one. So I see the value of that. I just don't know how practical that would be on your side and the programming side. Well, we've heard it um, plenty of times, and we are exploring various options for it. Um, nothing imminent to announce at the moment, cool. but we're definitely listening. I still think you got probably one of the best apps out there. I mean, um, just the functionality, the amount of control that you have from your smartphone or from your tablet is pretty crazy. So very, very cool stuff. And you don't have to read the manual to figure it out. It's just yeah. very intuitive. Yeah, because yeah. guys don't read don't read manuals. Mm -hmm. We just don't. You know, do no, it. What's the manual? One of the exactly. toughest part about that was that tutorial we built into it. You know, making sure that we were very crystal clear what each yeah. function did. Because I know you know right. people can sometimes overestimate you know how important sure. something is, but also underestimate. You know, they just want to tweak the phase just to see what it does, and it's like you just leave that alone unless you're having a real problem. But um, right. you know, I think it uh, like you said, it worked out pretty well. It's pretty user friendly. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of, I was kind of confused before. The older one, which one had the 10 inch driver? The, the PB1000 was the only driver we made driver, under yeah. 12 inches. Yeah. Right. And so even the, the SB was a 12? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was yeah. A 12 so that's inch where I got confused. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of people did because uh, I noticed in the comments, people like when you go from the 1000 to 1000 Pro, you're getting a 12 inch driver. And really what we've done going from 1000 series to 1000 Pro is a complete redesign, as Nick was saying earlier. The app, the amp is totally different. Adding the app-based control, the dual ports on the uh, 1000 uh, ported 1000 Pro. But where it really stepped up is the PB1000 went from a 300 watt single port 10 inch driver mm -hmm. to a 325. So not a ton of increase in amperage, but the different amp makes all the difference in the world. But adding the dual ports and now going to a completely redesigned 12 inch driver. It's a very different experience. So mm -hmm. listening animal. to the yep. existing 2000 to the 2000 Pro, you could tell the difference. But going from the 1000 to the 1000 Pro, the second you flip them on, you're like, whoa, it's very different. And like, um, I, I know we were talking about um, you guys, you know, going Hannibal on your own products over here. Um, I think the biggest difference is the power output. Or, you know, in the different lines, like when you get up to the 2000 and 3000, like the power <laughs> jumps pr pretty high, pretty high. So that is definitely something uh, to think about those of you out there, um, you know, trying to go back and forth between which SVS you should get. Check out the uh, power output on those uh, subs. Yeah, it's definitely one of the defining features. And, you know, if, if anything, we are very conservative with our power ratings. We don't like to overestimate, you know, because... Um, it just doesn't do us any favors when we when we say it's more powerful than it is. So we uh, underrate them to some degree, and then you know we, we hopefully blow people away with what they're able to do. There was a question up here about what size room would you recommend for the SB or I forget whether it was an yeah, SB or I, I the PB one thousand. SB one thousand Pro. Um, yeah, what are some room sizes? 
let's see. I'm in a 13 by 14 foot bedroom right now. And if I have my existing SB 1000, so not even the, the new pro, uh, I can feel it across the house in my bedroom. That's, you know, across a hall and open foyer and stuff. But uh, I'd say mm-hmm. any room that's probably 18 by 18 or smaller would be great for an SB 1000 pro, but that also kind of goes into if it's an open concept space or if it's a completely closed in room, uh, you know, people want to ask about sealed and ported and say ported is only for movies and sealed is only for music. And that's really not the case uh, because you can do so much tuning with these subs these days. Uh, but, you know, if I have somebody that's in a open concept space, I'd recommend a ported sub whether they're listening to music or movies because of all the fine tuning you can do now on a receiver. That way you don't lose as much bass into your neighboring rooms. Um, downstairs in my living room it's open to the kitchen and a hallway and a little breakfast area and it's a pc 2000 pro down there behind my tv in the corner and once again you feel it everywhere my neighbor knows when we get a new movie he knew when i got tenant so <laughs> oh, yeah. i still haven't seen that man why why because he didn't hear the vocals it. oh man well, let's see. <laughs> um, on, on, on how you got things go but uh yeah that's christopher nolan for you with his uh overblown music but i enjoyed one, it one thing one thing i'll say about room size though is that i think and i don't want to downplay it but i think people tend to overestimate the importance of that when choosing a subwoofer i think there's you know other factors that are as important if not more important one being what your listening preferences are like are you trying to crank these things and watch edge of tomorrow every day at like reference levels if so then you're going to want a bigger subwoofer but yeah. you know if you're listening at moderate levels and you're just trying to get that mm. rumble and sort of like subtle bass notes and you're not really cranking it to, you know, truly high output levels, then you're going to be fine with a smaller subwoofer. And then, you know, like Larry was saying, it's also the room dimensions. It's also where your listening position is, uh, whether you're going dual versus a single. Um, You know, so I I think the room size is certainly not unimportant, but there's a number of other factors that are equally, you know, in terms of what you're doing to actually pick the right subwoofer, uh, factors that are just as important. Tentative sub kill. I'm, you know, I'm really excited uh, for audio right now uh, because there's a lot more guys like Aaron that are doing objective Thank stuff. Thank you, Dan. Sorry. I saw yeah. And, and, you know, I know that you guys always post your frequency response. You you post a lot of that stuff on your website. You're not hiding behind it and saying, you know what, our subs do this, but uh, you're yeah. Not just, yeah, you're not just saying our subs have a chocolatey lower end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They do though. They do. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. I bet. <laughs> that's called and the so brown. I think that's note. awesome. You know, because then if uh, if Aaron gets a hold of them, you're like, all right, yeah, yeah, review it because you know you're gonna yeah. probably find what we yeah. have already found. <laughs> that's what I appreciated when I when I reached out. You were just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then you know, I said I did the review, and you were like, okay, cool. And it was it was no like oh, I don't agree with this or anything like that. It was just okay, cool. And I like that. Well, we, we, we don't want to be, you know, Oz behind the curtain. You know, the numbers don't lie. Yeah. You're right. going to get out there. People are going to tr- validate you or try to validate your claims. So if you're putting out BS, then, yeah. you know, you're going to get exposed. And yep. we've never done that. And we never will because yeah. it doesn't serve our community. It doesn't help you sell more because ultimately you just get exposed. So we'd rather be upfront at the beginning. Let people like Aaron do real world testing because actually I think Measurements only tell half of the story. The real world performance, when you have it in room, you know, ask the people who tune our subwoofers. That is an equally equally important factor in terms of how a, a subwoofer sounds when you're listening to it with music and home theater, et cetera. So, you know, it can measure a certain way, but if it stinks in room, you know, it, it's hardly doing its job. So, um, yeah, I mean, Larry, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, but it's always been our MO to, to not hide behind, you know, BS claims. We like to have some flowery language, but we certainly yeah. put the numbers out there that we actually, uh, you know, we support and test ourselves. Yeah. And, you know, building a product that we stand behind, I think is another big part of it too. We don't put a product out there. You know, we didn't have a release in 2020 and it was because we knew that as much as we loved the way this thing sounded when we were listening to the pre-production pieces, we're like, it's just not quite there. Mm -hmm. And so we kept pushing and our, well, not we, but our engineers, uh, Smith and Mitch and Jack and Gary, our CEO, and all of us that got a chance to listen to this and gain input on it. uh, It made the product what it is. And if you look at, we don't release a product that you guys dislike, you know? And so we're we're confident that when we do put a product out there that you're going to enjoy it, we will be a part of any reviews that you guys ask us to do to give you uh, insights or things that we've tested to try something out. But 
we're going to let you go and say what you want to say and uh, enjoy everybody reading it. It's like, yeah. you know, when you do your homework, you know, like sometimes you just you actually did all your homework. And then the next day, the test, you're just like, bring it. And then you hear the other people like, oh, they're worried. Right. <laughs> when you've done all your homework, you're just like, yeah, yeah let's bring the questions. No, no yeah. worries. Bring it. You yeah. have to be worried about. And I will say well, there's the, a certain. Uh, part. Go, ahead, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. I'll just throw out. There's a certain part of me, too, as, you know, a marketing guy who is, I'm, I'm also like, you know, P.T. Barnum in the sense where it's like, say whatever you want about me. Just spell my name right. Yeah. You know, when you're SPS, right. that's pretty easy. <laughs> call so it, it's call like, a circus. It's a lot easier to do that when you believe in your products. Sure. Um, and, and, you know, so that mentality has served us well because, you know, I have no fear, you know, send it out there. And right. I don't care if you're doing measurements and, you know, ground plane, CEA 2010, whatever, like have, have at it. Yeah, I remember when you sent me the PB3000, when those first came out, you sent me the SB3000 and the PB3000. You specifically told me in the email, you said, Michael, do not be scared to crank this thing up. You know, let her rip, man, and just see what she's got. And it was awesome. Mm-hmm. So definitely, Dude, definitely fun. That SB3000 is legit. It like is. I, it's so a I, bad little something. I've been using me. it upstairs with yeah. some Kef R3s yeah. um, and also <clears throat> the SB2000 Pro. But I took the SB3000 out. I think it was last Thursday and started. That's when I did the ground plane testing. And the numbers that that thing put up, I was like, yeah. what? And I, I actually tested it twice because I thought, I must have put something in the calibration file wrong or something. So I went back out and tested it again. And I was like, okay, like, yeah. <laughs> all right. That's pretty impressive. Well, and I remember on, on the SB3000, I had it cranked up and I, I said, I told my son, cause he likes bass. And I said, Jacob, come here. And I said, I cranked up one of his favorite songs and he was like, like what's playing. And I showed him, I said that right there. And he's like, yeah. what? I mean, you were talking to this little dinky <laughs> sub, yeah. you know, it's, what, 12 by 12 or something like that. Yeah. He was like, what? Compared to those big old it ported was cra- ones. And it was just sealed, you know? So, yeah. Oh yeah, that one got us in a lot of trouble at, at the last Expona. It was <laughs> I was there. Yeah. I was there yeah, when they were complaining about you guys. Complaining. Yeah, and yeah. I, I walked into a couple of the neighboring rooms to listen, and it was Mission Impossible Rogue Nation that kept getting mm-hmm. us in trouble. But I'd walk into those other rooms and like, ah, I, I'm not hearing anything. But, um, <laughs> you know, that's just the way some of those shows go. Yeah. He he was spelling – Speaking of uh, spelling your name right, I'm always confused whether it's SV sound, SVS sound, but that's for another discussion. Uh, no, I'll, I'll share that. We are SVS, and the name is not, I mean, somebody wants to guess. The name is not nearly as exciting as I wish it was, but it's uh, our two founders' names. So it's Stimson Vodhandle Subwoofers. So those are our two original founders who were building you know, our, our first models in a garage in Ohio. And, uh, and so that's where the name came from, and it's stuck, and you know, now we got some equity, and it's, we're having fun with it. Now, this is a question you see. Uh, it says the room is more important than the sub. And I remember you guys mentioning how you guys tuned the subs, you know, to the room. It's not like uh, whatever, however it falls off, just let it do that. That's fine. It's actually uh, some consideration was made as to how it might interact with most rooms. Is that right? Yeah. So with the, uh, the DSP that I mentioned, that 50 megahertz analog devices, what we're able to do is create, you know, custom room response curves. And, and that comes from testing it. You know, not you get your anechoic chamber, you know, laboratory perfect, mm-hmm. but then you have to bring it into a basement, bring it into right. an open concept living room, bring it into a bedroom and try, you know, listening in all these different environments and, and basically crafting a response curve that works and is flat in all those different settings. And that's right. sort of the magic of subwoofers that I think doesn't always get the same attention, you know, uh, from one manufacturer to the other, because that is what takes the longest in terms of development. It's not the cabinet geometry, the bracing, you know, putting the various elements of the driver and the amplifier together. All that's part of it. But tuning it in a real world environment, that is where the bulk of time is spent getting it to that point where it's like that thing sounds amazing. And not only that, you can benefit from, especially with the sealed cabinet models, acoustically tuned room gain. You know, room gain is fine. If it's acoustically tuned when it's not, it's boomy, it's messy, it's sloppy. It, it takes away from the experience. But if you can craft it in a way where you're actually using the room, you can get an extra, you know, several dB, a couple of, uh, you know, Hertz, lower frequency extension uh, just from the room. And mm-hmm. I think that's part of, you know, if I can use the word magic uh, lightly here of what <laughs> SVS does with its uh, subwoofers, specifically the sealed cabinet models. We got to add that to our list, Aaron. Dude, we got magic. we got a ton of questions coming in, man. They're just blowing I, up over here. So I, you, you mentioned sealed. If, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I, I, and then afterwards, I just want to say sealed versus ported because that's a question I know you're going to get asked all the time. But that's all for later. Time. Go ahead, Michael. 
Oh no, go ahead. That oh was no, Aaron. no. Aaron. So, Aaron asked. Oh, Aaron. Um, sorry. In regards to because I've I've gotten asked this in a review because somebody told me I said it wrong and I think that they were right, but you guys have a variable phase zero to one eighty. And for, I've come from the car audio and the pro audio side where that means actual phase, like all pass, not time delay. But somebody told me that on your guys and, and most home audio amplifiers that it is actually time delay. So I'm wondering, can you verify that it is actually time delay and I've been saying it wrong? And that's fine. It's, I don't mind being wrong. So there's a lot of manufacturers out there that whether, um, regardless of the sub, it was just a switch on the back for zero or 180 right, on right. the phase. And, right. you know, that's great if your subs are exactly across from each other in the perfect locations. Right. And that's something that we've now eliminated across the board where we have variable tuning from zero to 180 in one degree notches. Right. So you can put one in a corner, leave it at zero, throw another one off to the side, put it at 58, you know, right. wherever it's going to be and adjust them accordingly. So it does do some uh, phase adjustments in regards to the timing. Of the, the time sound. delay. Okay, Arriving so it's not an you. all pass filter, I guess. Is it, that's mm -hmm. the question that I had. Yeah, a little little different realm, but okay, you know, that's fine. Similar type story. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm all I know all about time delay, man. Coming from the car audio world, yeah. <laughs> you got to know about time delay. Yeah, I was just a quick question. All right, cool. What else that's impressive, Ari. We get. So I'm reading all the comments on the site. So and over, honestly, if there's a comment that you see that you just want to answer, guys, feel free to just jump in there, and then we'll pull the comment up for you. I do so, like I some gotta, of the you guys are coming up with. <laughs> oh, for SBS? Yeah, I saw yeah. that too. Uh, somebody's asking about, I mean, this is sort of a very uh, self-serving question here, but he's asking how well the isolation feet work for not bothering mm -hmm. your neighbors and still that. being able to crank it. Um, you know, I would say ultimately what that's allowing you to do is stop some of the vibration you know, if you're hitting those, yeah, there you go, Larry. You got one right there I've got handily a, on display. I have, I have props. He's got all of yeah. it right at his disposal, man. <laughs> you know, so when you decouple the subwoofer, a lot of that energy that is being transferred into the walls and the floors, which, which some people actually like, some people find it distracting. Uh, by not having that, you're not shaking the walls and the, you know, little knickknacks as, uh, you know, with your neighbors or your roommates as much. Um, you're also, a lot of people say you're getting a little bit more of that sort of, uh, visceral bass response where you can kind of feel it and like heart pounding sort of like tingling on your arms uh, because all that energy instead of going into the floor is now going into the air so um it, it definitely helps i mean if you order from our site we do have a trial period so if you find it does nothing send it back but we've had people have success you know, concrete wood floors uh, all sorts of different scenarios so it's worth a shot if you have neighbors who are not loving your uh heavy bass nights uh, yeah. certainly won't hurt i mean i would recommend decoupling your sub if you don't have neighbors, mm -hmm. <laughs> just, just just do it. It's a it's it's a huge improvement on the base, I think, from my experience. That's what I. Shana, you have uh, a measurement for that, don't you? For like yeah. the yeah, yeah the wine glasses. <laughs> <in> the <kitchen>. <laughs> <laughs> Once those start shaking, oh, we're getting there. That's and right. then yeah. I found out that's um, good base. The uh, window by one of the couches when you get eighteen hertz rolling, oh, that one just really starts moving. And then, like, 15 hertz is, like, the main, like, patio sliding door. <laughs> Look, Daryl has the same find the, uh, same finding. The, the feet prevent my glassware from vibrating in the bar. So, you see how scientific we are over here? Yes. Same yeah, conclusion right there. The, uh, we used to hear the pickle jars and ketchup and stuff, everything that's in the glass jars in the fridge, because uh, it's just a long space between our kitchen and the living room. And my fridge and the PC2000 Pro are in the exact opposite corners from each other. So we had to do some manipulation of what's in the fridge to compensate for it. But when I went from the 16 to the PC uh, 2000 Pro in that space, the isolation system definitely made uh, quite a bit of difference. And then even in here in my office, the SB2000 that I have in here has the isolation system on it, but the 1000 under my desk does not. And that is changing as soon as the new uh, Subble forgets here. Sorry, that's my alarm. I was supposed to come pick up my kid, but I got somebody else doing it. So <laughs> there you go. Oh, she can wait. Kids on, just right. hanging out. Kids <laughs> yeah. there. They can wait. So <laughs> it's not twenty degrees in Texas anymore. Exactly. Yeah, we don't have any more ice. One oh, of the questions yeah. I've seen come up several times is about stacking your subs. Um, do you recommend that? Is that okay to do with your subwoofers? Um, do they need the isolation feet? Maybe talk a little bit about that. Larry, so, you want to take mm -hmm. that one? Yeah, you can totally stack our subs. We have people all over the place that stack uh, two. I've seen in some instances where they've gone three high, but you know I wouldn't go any more than two. Um, we've seen 1,000 series, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. I think one of my favorites is a room that had uh, six PB16s in it. 
uh, where they had on sides of screen two stacked on the left and right, and then two directly below the screen. It's just a beautiful setup. Uh, you can do the isolation system between them, but they do have feet under them that will uh, not damage the product that it's sitting on top of, and they don't dance. And I think that's uh, a lot of stuff that comes up um, when you look at our subwoofers compared to some other ones where people uh, talk about when they get pretty loud that the subwoofer will tend to move across the floor, and you won't see that with ours. So if you do stack them, you're not going to have to worry about one falling off the top of the other either. That's cool. So if I can bring a picture up here. <laughs> I hadn't seen this one in a long time. You guys pretty much answered all so my actually questions. Did that. So I'm good. Oh yeah, yeah. I, so I wouldn't really recommend doing a sealed and a and a ported, but it was mostly for the photo out there. But I was like, <laughs> let's do oh. it, man. But we cranked them up. So that's a PB16 on the bottom pair of those, and then the the SB uh, 16s. Dude, and how'd you that, get them on the stage? Yeah, I want to see how you do that. I work out, man. I drink my milk. Well, I mean, no offense, but you're not Arnold or anything. Out. You're Arnold no, in the I had, 70s. I, I had help. <laughs> so, yeah, we stack the subwoofers, and then we put the little scalas up there. So, so yeah, so you definitely can stack them. It's not going to scratch them because they do have the rubber feet on the bottom. Um, so, cool. Man, yeah, those rubber feet were, sure like the, the, were like the biggest pain in the butt. What's that? <laughs> The rubber feet were the biggest pain in the butt because for me, you know, I have carpets. So I'm like, oh, I take them off, I took them off and just slide them around. Oh, like, I take oh, them off. I move That's the thing. first thing I do with any subwoofer review. I remove your feet because because <laughs> I'm like finding the best place in the room for them, you know, and I slide them around because you got to how much is the PB16? What's the weight on that? 175. Yeah, so, well, yeah. So, it's all, 155. so 155 and I'm sliding that joker by myself all around my room, you know, so. But yeah, I'm with Jonathan, man. I take I take the feet off. I love walking into our retail partner stores. Like you know, the the 16 Ultra and the 4000 are both inside a room at the Magnolia Design Centers, and I can always tell when they've moved the subwoofers because they almost leave like tire tread um, on the (laughs) on the carpet. Yeah, Yeah, it's hilarious. And you know, the subwoofers way more than I do, so I tend to just lay them over on their side on top of something and slide it around. Yeah, Yeah. I've done that too to keep the feet on, just to show. Yeah, Yeah. I use the furniture sliders or cardboard can even work on uh, carpeting as well. Sure, you know, so whatever helps you get a nice slide. So with uh, Youth Man, you you bring up uh, your your picture here, and you bring up a good. Good question. Is is it okay to mix sealed and ported in the same setup? Oh no! I, I personally don't recommend that. I think you can do it. It's just probably a pain in the butt to try to get those to play nicely together. I always tell my my audience either do all ported or all sealed. Yeah. Don't try to mix those. I think it's just it's a lot easier to do those. Um, kind of along that same line that I may not. I think I know the answer to it. But I get a lot of times people ask me, um, can I do like, say, for instance, one of your 13 inch subwoofers with a 10 inch subwoofer? Does that, you know, it, let's say they're both ported or they're both sealed. Are there any acoustical issues with mixing sizes? Well, I don't know. I see Nick's got something charged up there, but you know, uh, this comes up on our, our broadcast quite a bit too. And we mm-hmm. try to say, you know, if they're both ported, yeah, if they're both sealed, yeah, you don't want to mix the two like you were just saying a second ago. But if you have, say, like a PB3000 and you throw a PB1000 in there, mm-hmm. will they work together? Absolutely. Yeah. Will one of them kind of cancel out or overpower the other? Yes, that's possible as well. But if you're using, say, one of our PB2000 Pros and another brand's vented subwoofer or ported subwoofer, I the odds of them working together are going to be much more difficult to define. Okay. So you're not really going to get them. To play nice. So try to keep them in the same brand, but, but yes. size it's okay. If you have one that's larger than the other. Yeah. Cause you can't yeah. fit, you know, a couple PB four thousands in a room. So if you did a PB yeah. four thousand, maybe up front and did a PB one thousand pro or PB two thousand, sure. PB three thousand in the back, you could do that. Um, you know, I, I see the sealed over ported for home theater. Uh, I, I tend to do sealed in most cases just because of their size. Um, So I don't think there's really a a wrong or right answer to somebody saying, hey, do you want a sealed sub or a ported sub? Um, Sometimes it's going to be based on where it fits. Um, I would say if you've got an enclosed room, you could really go either route in most cases. Uh, Where I do tend to recommend a ported sub 
is when you're in an open room or a much larger space or vaulted ceilings or where you only have maybe three walls. Uh, so that's kind of where we tend to go with a ported sub or somebody that's really wanting that. I use the phrase IMAX level, theatrical level base. That's where mm -hmm. a ported sub comes in. But going to one of our ported subs now with the subwoofer control app, you can make it sealed if you wanted to as well. Yeah. You know, I think mixing and matching, I think that's a debatable topic. You know, I've seen people with different opinions on that. And I'm actually going to start testing this one software, uh, multi-sub optimizer, where it takes measurements of each sub and it tries to blend them all together. And so at that point, when you're doing that sort of thing, I'm not sure that it makes as much of a difference because you're actually, you know, seeing how each one responds and then combining them and optimizing for all of them together. Um, so yeah, I still, I don't know if there's a definite, like for sure, this is, this is what the answer think, is when it comes to I don't to think that. you can, I don't think it, we're saying that you can't do that. I just think it's a lot more work to get them to play yeah. nice together, I think is the key. And I think you're in a situation where it's, it's what you do and you've got access to the software mm -hmm. and most people aren't That's going true. to be able to walk into a retail store. They're running, they're running Odyssey, they're, they're running yeah. yeah. Wipeout. Well, I guess what I'm thinking is from, you know, moving forward, I think that a lot of this stuff is going to start getting more advanced as far as the, the room correction stuff on AVRs. And so if it's doing that sort of thing manually or automatically, it doesn't know, it doesn't care what, you know, what you're putting in there, whether it's sealed or ported, it's just going to do what it's going to do, you know, and figure it out for itself. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see how that turns up. I mean, if I'm wrong and somebody let me know, but, um. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's I think the I mean. one the one certainty is that using the exact same subwoofer, if you're going to have duals, three quads, whatever, is always going to get you the best response um, in room and require right. the least amount of work. So, I mean, that we can all agree on. But you know, obviously, some people buy a subwoofer; it goes out of you know out of commission, and got to buy another one. You got to mix and match. It's a you know it's a common thing that people have to deal with. But yeah. if you have the opportunity and you're you know buying them from you know new then just get the same model, two of the same model if you're going duels and, uh, you know, you always get the best response out. My uh, goal is to have the most different subs. You know what I mean? Like all sense. different. Sound, I want sound everyone exactly to be the same, right? Sound exactly. <laughs> you know how that works out. <laughs> to do yeah. for my testing, the worst case scenario, I'm going to get all different ones. See what happens. Um, here, here's your new, uh, your new product, guys. Um, architectural subwoofers. There you go. Does SVS have in-ceiling subs? Ooh, in ceiling? I'm not sure there's any in ceiling subs in the world right now, but we have uh, we've spoiled that secret. That's the one sort of launch that we gave away, and uh, we're we're still developing that. But hopefully by Cedia of this year, we're going to be making a big splash with our uh, in wall subwoofer. I can't oh. can't say for certain you'll be able to throw it in a ceiling, but uh, that's going to be the goal here to uh, to roll out our first architectural uh, base maker there around uh, Cedia time. Dude, which is and will October. that be like a whole architectural line as well? Like, nope, just you know, a, a single just single product for now, and okay. you know we'll never see, see how it goes. See what yeah. see what happens, yeah, right? Cool. Yeah. But you know, there's uh, there's <laughs> not a ton of solutions for. out there, you know, in in yeah. what we like to call a an SVS level subwoofer for that is architectural. Nice. So um, we're looking to bring that you know out to the forefront there, and, and hopefully get some dealers excited, installers you know, yeah. excited about cool. that. Joe needs to have one get from each nice line, including stuff. both sealed and ported. No, no, send those to Aaron. He's got the huge house. <laughs> Yeah, test right. equipment. Don't like, send. Where them to are you me. gonna put that? Yeah. <laughs> I want to see Joe. I want to see Joe Man handle that PV. Joe, Mike Joe's just gonna be 16, sitting on man. tubs. It's it's gonna be the chair. Like that's it. that's pretty much. <laughs> how it's gonna work. Yeah, and I see somebody saying. I see Kanga saying we're gonna see people put that thing in the ceiling, and I, I totally don't doubt it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it could be interesting. I I wouldn't do it if you have an attic up above you, but uh, you know, it's uh, there's opportunities for that too, but. We, we do have more product announcements this year, and uh, I think you guys will like what's coming. Oh, cool. yeah. So Very I think good. somebody so we'll asked a, a funny question earlier. It's like, are you allowed to have other speakers? Are, are there any <laughs> companies like... Are you no, like, actually, yeah. Uh, well, I'll say this much. Uh, Gary is currently our president um is currently shopping around for some very high-end two-channel speakers to just kind of see what the best of the best sounds like right now nice he's very got cool. a connection where you know he's not paying full price to get them all the time but yeah. like we we like to know what's out there so for us to sure. sort of oh. put on our blinders and just say mm -hmm. you know svs and svs only right. it doesn't serve us well um so there's no rule but uh you know i 
I don't know, Larry, you got other brand speakers in your house? You don't really need to. <laughs> not anymore. That's, that's I mean, nice. I, not anymore. And ours sound great, so. So when I started with the company, you know, I, I think as a lot of us did, I uh, <clears throat> I don't like spending money on myself. So <laughs> I went out and found some of the best uh, reviewed product for the money I could. And uh, we did some multi-room audio as well from another brand. <laughs> and whenever I introduced Prime Wireless to the house, uh, my family found it so much easier to use that the other product was given away to friends and family. Um, so I found <laughs> hey, Prime Wireless sucks. You take it all over the house. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't Not have even my the good stuff for myself. Messages like, "Oh, this," I, like like Chana just mm -hmm. said, I don't have anybody in the house calling me, going, "Hey, why can't I get this to work?" Or mm -hmm. "This sucks," because you just hit a button on the front of the product, and it. You know, I've got Prime Wireless right here on my desk, and I've got a sound base up here, and. Uh, I build PowerPoints and trainings and stuff for the company. And when I'm sitting in here, uh, the entire neighborhood knows when I'm working um, because I get this room way louder than I should where my ears are ringing for a day or two. But, uh, you know, I think that's part of the fun of our, our brand is we do have cool new products. We do launch new stuff. So, yeah, we get to test quite a bit, and I do have a few systems in the house. Um, yeah. But everything's SVS now. Everything's SVS. Look out. I got uh, I got a little thought for you, and maybe I kind of know what you're going to say, probably, but uh -oh. it'd be kind of cool to see like a little 2.1 setup, small, not the prime wireless, the the bigger ones for computers, man. One that the actual amplifier will work, unlike said companies that I'm using in front of me. Oh, like built in, <laughs> like amp, like everything's powered, Michael. No, Rhymes I mean, with itch. No, it. it <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, I have my uh, my prime wireless powered bookshelves right here on my desk. I just don't. I don't have the room. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like a I'm satellite. Like, yeah, yeah. He yeah. wants a satellite with. Yeah, yeah, these these. Yeah, I like them, but they don't work half the time. So. Well, yeah. we have a lot of people that buy our sound base amplifier with a pair of our prime satellites because they are smaller okay, than the gotcha. prime wireless speaker, even though they're essentially the same speaker. Sure. But because they don't have the amplification in them, they are smaller. Gotcha. Um, so I've done that. That's how what I travel with my kit for work that I was traveling. Well, mm -hmm. golly, can you guys realize it's been a year since I've been yeah. on the road? I go. just that just mm -hmm. hit me. Um, but I traveled with this huge kit that had the sound base in it mm -hmm. and uh, prime uh, satellites, and then I added the prime wireless instead. And that's what I go around and hook up for everybody to listen to. And uh, man, that that little amp with those speakers was just a killer setup. Nice. And with all the different inputs that whether the prime wireless powered speakers have or sure. the sound base have, you can hook it up to a computer. You can do multi-room. You can do Bluetooth. You can do PlayFi, whatever. And it's just a killer setup. My, my 10 year old was in here talking to me earlier and he went back into his room and put on some music after he heard what I was listening to in here. Nice. I drown you out. Super cool. Yeah, you, I, I had my Hans Zimmer station going, man. So it was, uh, <laughs> it was Hans and it was uh Musical scores and all kinds of stuff. I forgot we could do this. Oh, I don't need my big old head on it. <laughs> you know, it'd be pretty messed up is to like to like zoom in on these guys, right? And then just start like throwing out guesses as to like new stuff, and just like have somebody analyze their facial expressions. That's right. Did, <laughs> they, did their eyes? Up? Did their eyes twitch? Did, did they? Did they, they to the the right or to the left? Is not not as good as mine. <laughs> but, uh, I'll put on my Batman not... mask if you do that. <laughs> I got a Batman mask right here. I could throw on real quick. There so what go. are some what are some things that maybe you guys want to talk about that we haven't talked about, whether it's a Q&A, a question that comes up that you think our audience would love to hear, or maybe you're just some things that um, you can at least tease us with? Oh, well, um, the Mike's all about I mean, that. Saw, uh, one yeah, of the most yeah, popular yeah. things is always like, what are our favorite demos? And, and I know Larry's cool. got a, uh, a script of about a, a hundred different movie scenes, like right down to the timestamp of like nice. when the... the deep low frequencies so i mean that's always a fun <laughs> conversation but cool. i'm actually i that's mean i know you guys yeah look at that there, there. Right. That's spread spread yeah. I'm going to share something. there you'll just have to pause your video guys everybody yeah. that's just part of my oh there that's just go. part of the list guys nice so yeah that's like page uh, one of is seven. It right side does that say medea's yeah. family reunion is that what that's <laughs> yeah. 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 the whole yeah. tyler perry there. section i saw there. yep no that's my i actually I haven't printed ahead, a new one. Larry. I need to print a new one. No, I was just saying that's kind of my old list. I need to print. Yeah, we got to refresh. We want to create one just for horror movies too, because I think there's uh, it's oh, an yeah. un under uh, and not everyone likes horror movies, so it's not for everyone. But the suspense you can get from a subwoofer and a great yeah, audio yeah. system when it comes to you know deeply scary movies is just there's nothing else like it. Like you can, yeah. I mean, I I got a 16 year old, and uh, 
at Larry's request, I showed him Annabelle creation. Oh my gosh. Like he's like all <laughs> big badass. you know, I'm 16 and nothing scares me. He was shivering. So, yeah. I mean, there's something to be said there for, uh, mm-hmm. you know, horror you, movies. You get I, capable, I mean, you get capable subwoofers to play something like the conjuring or yeah. a quiet place. That stuff is trippy, man. I mean, the it'll. Quiet place is great. Oh my the goodness. The haunting. Uh, do you guys remember that one? I think it was 1999 with uh, that one. Catherine Zeta Jones and Liam Neeson. I do remember that. Uh, was that the one with like that? Uh, I'm thinking of like a big house or something. It has something yeah. to do with like some weird house. Uh, yeah, I do remember that. Not on Blu ray. Well, it might yeah. be now, but it hasn't mm-hmm. been forever and it's never been on 4K, but it's on uh, DVD and yeah, it has DTS ES 6.1. And only because I busted it out for the family not that long ago. And man, it's got some notes that are insane. So I'm nice. waiting on that to come out, but I'm a horror movie junkie. So I, I, Gary doesn't like it when we play a lot of uh, horror movies at our events, but I can see I do have play yeah. a few with me that I travel with. Well, you know, um, two of the outstanding like Atmos mixes, you know, recently are, is the the uh, the 4K version of 300 and of course Midway. So mm-hmm. definitely check those out. If you guys have it. Trying to get yeah, your drum thing had, ready. Uh, we had one of the sound engineers from Midway on uh, with our broadcast a few months back too. So okay, cool. I use um, yeah. I don't know if you guys it, it's probably worth doing, um, but if you've got a pretty good mic, just go outside on a really windy day and just turn the mic perpendicular to the wind, and you can record a good twenty to thirty hertz rumble. I'm just kidding. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like good money. <laughs> like what is this? Got guy? Us. There we go. Got you know, it's towards we the were end, all we wondering where he was going with that. <laughs> yeah. We got our jokes. So are you guys, so so are you guys going to be um, uh, selling those at Fry's Electronics? Oh God! Oh, wow. Wow. Huh? Oh, yeah, wow. that was the best place ever. I used to drive three hours just to go there. Just to, I wouldn't even buy anything. I would just go and look around because it was like Radio Shack on steroids. That's funny. I'm that. sad about that. Theme, we don't I mean, have any Fry's down here, like, Florida. Such cool themes like that, and and uh, yeah. Larry was kvetching because the one the one Fry's that had no theme. Is the one like in his backyard? It's just like a straight up big box store. <laughs> right. Um, Every other one is like a temple or a, you know. But I've been in all. I'd, I'd been in all thirty three of their stores. Oh wow! Uh, really? So they're you know they're they're really cool layout and everything. And uh, here where I live in the, the Dallas Fort Worth area, they took over a building for a store called Incredible Universe. And if none of you have ever been in an Incredible Universe, this goes back to the nineties. You need to look that up. That never was heard of it. The That's coolest incredible. electronic store ever. We yeah. always had sound advice down here in Florida. Yeah. Um, no, I guess that's true. similar to Tweeter. I think Tweeter yep. bought them out. We had a Tweeter time. around here. We've got a Hi Fi yeah. Buzz, and in, in, so I'm about two hours from Nashville. That's the closest Hi Fi store, but I'll, mm. that's a pretty cool store. Yeah, we don't have any hardly down here. It's crazy. They've all closed up shop. So they don't have nothing. In it's Alabama. nice being able to, you know, for people to be able to order stuff from like SVS, try it out. You've got a, what's your 45 day policy? Yep. So 45 yep. days to kind of try it if you don't like it. Chana, what do they do? What? RTS. Oh, they, you can return that shit. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's, what, that's, that's, that's the phrase. There's two things. It's uh, RTS, return that shit, or GTS, Google that shit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> because every it's, comment I get on my yeah. channel can this just be fries. Googled, and they can get the... Is, yeah, What's that's that? a Burbank one. Yeah, yeah. This, is the, this is my fries over here. That's pretty cool. And so they're, they're, know, they're okay. out. I, I bought so much stuff from them. Back in the day, can you believe? Like when I was younger, I applied, you know, mm-hmm. to work there at Fry's, and they didn't hire me. Can you believe that? Like, you know Go how figure. many speakers I would have sold. I used to work at Circuit City. Be in City. Today. You'd they be screwed, like, <laughs> exactly. You could have saved up there. him, Joe. Joe to the rescue. Uh, no, that's what <laughs> that, that's what made him who he is today. He was so mad. He that's was, right. He was, he I was will bent. get vengeance. He's been. You know? I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna start a channel. He, he used yeah. that as motivation. I'm gonna succeed. Yeah, Fry's gonna close. Fifteen I, years, I'm going to just think I, I see it happening. <laughs> I enjoyed my time at Circuit City. It was fun. Circuit so City. I see uh, oh. SI Services keeps asking if we're going to make uh, something similar to the KFKS 62, and we don't disclose our product development plans. As everyone knows, we try to keep secrets, sometimes more successfully than others, but we will never say never when it comes to subwoofer development. So that's as much of a teaser as I'm willing to give you. Um, oh. Nothing imminent. Mm-hmm. Nothing imminent, but uh, you know, certainly we keep our eye on what everyone's doing, cool. and uh, you know, they're no they're no different than any of the other uh, competitors. I, so, I got a I got a question. I do too. Go ahead. 
Okay. So since we're on the Pro designation, are we going to be seeing SB4000 Pro, PB4000 Pro, Ultra 16 Pro? You know, are you guys going the Apple route and just <laughs> we're just making new <laughs> shit and just call it everything. a Pro? <laughs> I, I will say, wow. Go ahead, Larry. You want to tap dance or you want me to? <laughs> I think you guys will notice that the, the Pro designation has come to replacement products like something that replaced an existing series mm. and the technology okay. that is in the pro series is already in the 3000 4000 and 16 ultras makes sense and the only other thing i'll add on to that is we have some very exciting product launches that will come before any of those new pro series that uh that were just mentioned ultra 16 so, pro mega i like Max. that <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, joe's is the best whatever you put in that instagram where it was oh, like, yeah. Isolation, pla- I don't even know what it was. Isolation path pla- cable risers. Yes, there it is. That's our next <laughs> ultra, big, uh, ultra, ultra max, ultra pro max, sixteen ultra so. platform isolation riser wireless adapter. That's it, guys. So, so Nick, <laughs> do you want to do you want to tease what's coming in a few weeks, Nick? Oh, well, I will. I will. We're uh, March eighteenth. Come on, That's Thursday. We, uh, March eighteenth. Come on, thing. let's go. We do this little thing called the SVS Virtual Audio File Happy Hour, and usually it's just like what you guys are doing, just uh, us talking shop, having fun, discussing uh, what we're listening to, etc. But this most recent one, we launched the 1000 Pro Series, which is uh, one of the reasons we're here. But March 18th, we're going to do another product launch, and it's a mystery right now uh, as to what it is, and hopefully it'll still be a mystery up until about 5.59 on Thursday, March 18th. Thursday. But I would yeah. encourage anyone who's checking out today to uh, to be a part of that. We will be doing tons of giveaways as we like to do um and this will be a very uh important product for us that actually doesn't replace anything it's a completely okay. new type of product for svs nice. so that's about as far as i'm willing to go um Good stuff. it's gonna be said we had so much fun doing the last one and it brought cool. a lot of energy to the launch and you know without being able to get out there at the uh the dealers and doing our live event thing i mean i we couldn't think of a better way to sort of launch it than uh than come right from the you know, the mouth of our CEO and, and our team here, uh, nice. sharing all the details, taking questions, that kind of thing. So hopefully so basically uh, March stay 18th. tuned, stay tuned. March 18th. stay tuned, March 18th, put it on your calendar. What time? And we might use that same picture of the uh, crate. So uh, there you go. feel free to guess. What, uh, what's, 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 what's in the box? Yeah. What's in the box? Shape? Open the box. Have like a person do shape a, kind of a, coming a, out of the top of it. <laughs> just do yeah, the Maybe meme. we should change the crate shape around. We'll do like a cylinder crater. Oh, no, that's not it. That's not it. Make it a circle, Nick. Let's put a UFO coming into it. You know, a UFO. What are the dimensions of the box going to be? If you can tell us the dimensions of the box. <laughs> <I know. laughs> 80 by 40 inches. And the weight. Oh, in millimeters or centimeters? <laughs> <laughs> uh, All okay. right. Well, we have our uh, our after show that we do. So I know you guys are very busy, especially with your new launch. You guys are just like selling like hotcakes over there. So I know you guys stay busy. Yeah. Did um, you, did you if- notice I went on their site? There's already reviews posted up from today. These sound awesome. These sound amazing oh, for the wow. for the uh, for the one thousand Pro series. So good job, I mean, they're killing some, it. Yeah, I saw a couple uh, tweets that went out where people were posting pictures and like, I think I got the first you know public tweet, and I I think they did. So they're I know they're out in the wild right now. Um, so we'll start seeing reviews coming in uh, here. I would think within the near future. Although uh, we did populate our product pages with uh, you know, some of our other subwoofer reviews, so they're not all one thousand Pro. Um, you know, those oh, are different okay. models there, so those are mixed, but. Those will start coming in here sooner than later. So uh, we're not trying to, you know, pull anything over. We clearly mentioned which products these are for, but we just didn't yeah. want it to be, you know, an empty page. Oh, gotcha, man! What's that was exciting. I was like, damn, box? there's like nine pages of reviews that uh, all came Nick, in on the first of do. March. <laughs> Soon enough. I think we got to have fun with that uh, meme from Seven there. Whenever we there do our go. launch, I like that it. Was, that That's was a good movie. That's but, a great but use that, movie. man. That'd be funny. Well, we're 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 up on time, Chana. Let's uh, give a link to the after show, but uh, you guys can ask your questions there. Nick, Larry, thanks so much for taking the time out to hang out with us and our audience. And um, like I said, if you guys can stay for even just a few minutes for the after party, um, just so people can ask some direct questions to you. Those of you that are uh, our patrons, we'd love to have you drop by and uh, hang out with us just for a few minutes. So, Chana. That's right. So cool. um, for those of you that want to uh, go to the after show, go to patreon.com slash daily hi-fi and 
sign up for Patreon, and then you get the exclusive link to take you into the... Um, it's like this, but you guys are also on video as yeah. well. So it's a video chat yeah. room. Listen, Please yeah. keep it PG. And... Um, <laughs> That yeah, never ironically happens. said by you. The guy dropped <laughs> that never happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially hey, if anybody wants Mike to message there, you have no idea what's gonna happen. If anybody yeah. wants to message me directly, you don't have to do Patreon. Just slip me like a fiver via PayPal and I'll give you a link. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got another site oh. he'll send you to. <laughs> uh -oh. Fantastic. All right, guys. So, again, <laughs> we do this right. every... What, what was that? What happened? Go ahead. I was, just, Go ahead. I was just saying thanks to everybody that uh, was here. Seeing all the comments was a lot of fun. Yes, and thank you guys uh, again, uh, Nick and uh, the Larry. Sorry, the, the Nick and the Larry uh, from Nick. SBS. Uh, uh, Nick. Uh, Nick and the uh, Larry. Nick. That sounds like it, such you an know what, Indian name. One, one thing, uh, if you're disappointed that they didn't do a giveaway, I specifically said, you know what, keep that for your channel. That's your thing. Yep. And so, so it's just too much Joe to manage. It's my there's fault. no giveaways. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Oh, go to their channel. Though? They do plenty. After our next launch, can we come back and we'll do a giveaway on that one? Yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. cool. Okay. All that'd right. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do sure. that then. Sure. All Maybe right. Some new product. So. Ooh. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. Can we enter? Yeah. Your show, your rules. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, man. Love well, to give thanks, thanks everyone for hanging out. Um, on behalf of myself, oh, there's a lot of people here. Mike, <laughs> Eric, Joe, Larry, and Nick. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. We do this every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and we will see you next week. For those of you on uh, Patreon, we'll see you in just a few minutes. Peace. See ya. Thanks, guys. Don't leave. Bye, everybody.